There is a monster that lurks across the pond, one usually only seen on American shores, the Camaro ZL1. It's a muscle car as exciting as it is rare, so when you have a chance to experience one outside of its natural habitat, that's an opportunity you surely have to grab with both hands. <laughs> this car is an absolute maniac! Listen to that exhaust! It's just wild! I'm driving back through a cloud in my own smoke, I can't see a thing! <laughs> wow! The $60,000 ZL1 is a track-focused step up from the basic Camaro. Where the entry-level LS has a four-cylinder engine and other models a V6, the ZL1 pulls out all the stops with a 6.2-litre LT4 supercharged V8. Standard cars produce 640 horses and 868 newton meters, but this particular example is not your average ZL1. This ZL1 has been modified. The engine has an upgraded air intake and throttle body, an LT4 supercharger and a Stage 2 three-port methanol injection kit. And the results are explosive. Power is up, way up. The standard car made 650 horsepower, but this thing now makes 770. By default, it did 0 to 62 in about 3.5 seconds, but this, Obviously, it's a lot angrier. Oh, it's so punchy coming out of the corners. <laughs> I remember driving the hardcore track-focused ZL1 1LE at Willow Springs in California with Sabine Schmitz. She pushed me to my limits, trying to get me to get the car to its limits. <laughs> and I remember even on that track, I was sweating. Fuck it, honestly, it was so hardcore. Out here, this is a much twistier, much more technical handling circuit. <laughs> Probably not ideal for this car. <laughs> but it's bringing all of those emotions back. Mostly fear. God, I miss you, Sabine. <laughs> and it looks sensational, although it's far from standard. The eagle-eyed amongst you will recognize that this car has the front bumper from a ZL1 1LE, Chevy's hardcore track special. It also has an aftermarket carbon splitter, chameleon front windscreen to protect the owner's privacy, custom black badges, and a new rear diffuser below the 1LE rear spoiler, so it looks just as mean as it drives. You've got a choice of gearboxes with a Camaro ZL1, either a six-speed manual with auto blipping or, in this case, a 10-speed auto. Obviously, the manual is the way to go for driver involvement. That was the gearbox on the 1LE car I drove in America, and it was super, super involving. But I'll tell you what, this 10-speed, it shifts nicely. In fact, according to Chevy, it actually upshifts quicker than a Porsche PDK. I'm not quite so sure about the downshifts. It's a little bit more lethargic than a PDK, but I tell you what, you've got 10 gears in here. You're always going to find one that works for you. Right, what's the steering like? While we're comparing it to Porsches, it's not quite as surgical or precise as you might find in the 911. There's not quite as much feel or feedback through the, <laughs> through the steering, but quick enough to respond to situations like that. You can get this thing sideways and it's certainly responsive enough for you to take matters into your own hands, apply a bit of opposite lock. And the bottom line is it's just involving. Plenty good enough. I'm also very impressed with the suspension. It's on the firm side, but the body control is exceptional. It feels like a serious car. Then as you get it into a corner, what's the balance like? A little bit of understeer if you go too fast, but... Keep your foot planted, correct it with oversteer, bang, what a weapon. As for the brakes, 
Well, you've got 390 mil six pots up front, 365s on the back, four pots, what they like. Do they stop? Ow! <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I think, I think those work. <laughs> so the ZL1 is a very involving car, but it's not one that everybody appreciates. In fact, there are places where this car is actually not tolerated at all. The ZL1 Wanna League was banned in Europe thanks to those dangerous looking aerodynamic aids seemingly designed to slice your ankles off. But parts of America passed legislation that banned the car too. It's technically not allowed in California and Washington, but not necessarily for the reasons you might think. The reason for that ban was fish. Yes, bear with me. These brake discs, which work tremendously well by the way, have a reasonably high copper content and as the brake discs wear down that copper gets released into the air and inevitably ends up in the waterways poisoning aquatic wildlife specifically salmon the laws in california and washington specifically say that brake discs can only have five percent copper content the zl1 did not which meant it was banned i mean i find it a little bit ironic that you could walk into any restaurant in california and order a plate full of dead fish then jump back in your prius but there you go. The ZL1 is slightly more kind to humans on the inside. It has all the mod cons you might expect, including Apple CarPlay, comfy seats, and a decent stereo, although it's hard to hear anything with that exhaust. Unfortunately, the suspension is very firm, even on the track. And unlike the Mustang, it only comes in left-hand drive, so pulling out of junctions and overtaking is always an event. And yet, that's one of the things that makes the Camaro ZL1 so appealing. It's an event, a real, undiluted muscle car. And for that reason, it's a car you can't help but love. Everybody knows I am a Mustang man through and through. But if you ever get the chance to send one of these around a corner, take that opportunity with both hands. Like I said, it's just epic fun. What a weapon. I need one of these. I need one of these.